by most, feared by all, and a track that is as old as time itself. Today, we're going to join that history. Live from Frankishamps, Belgium, it's the IMSA Vintage Series Round 4, live here at Global Sim Racing Channel. Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Mike Noss, and joining me in the booth tonight is Craig King. Behind the scenes is our director, Daniel Costello, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. A track that has plowed its way through the Belgian countryside, now a staple in everybody's heart. Why don't we take a little glimpse of that at our GSRC track guide? Welcome to Spa Francorchamps. Less than an hour's drive east from the German border, this Belgian track has come to define racing for many different eras in the sport. It's no wonder it continues to entrance drivers when you look at the stats. The seven kilometers over the course of a lap includes more than 330 feet in elevation change as it weaves its way through the Ardennes forest. Packed into this is 19 turns, some of which are considered among the most famous in the world of racing. Corners like La Source and Blanchemont have been on the lips of drivers for decades. But by far the most notorious is Eau Rouge and Redillon. Typically referred to in name by just the first section, it dips low and swings left, then compresses and climbs to the right up a massive hill. The sequence ends with a completely blind crest that sweeps to the left and leads onto the incredibly long Kemmel Strait. The bravery required to be fast through there will pay off towards one of the most popular passing spots at Lacoum. Eau Rouge is exemplary of the rest of the circuit though. Most of the turns are incredibly fast and many include much of that signature elevation change. As jaw-dropping as the track is, you have to remember that this is the modern truncated layout. The old one, raced until 1979, was 14 kilometers in length, yet carried an average speed of 150 miles per hour. Present day safety measures do cut down on the danger, but even in recent history, the circuit has proven deadly. It's clear why this track continues to be revered and respected by racers the world round. What a lovely 4.3 mile circuit that we have here tonight. Now, Craig, why don't you talk us through what these drivers can expect here tonight? Yeah, well, this is a driver's track. And as you said, it's 4.3 miles long, 19 turns out there. It's a little of everything. And as a former top driver on the sim once told me, if you can drive here, you should be able to drive anywhere. Now, it's a track designed for high speeds and downforce effect cars, so the GTPs will be enjoying this week yet again. However, the lack of camber in the corners will affect the Nissans, and as well as its usual enemy of all Nissans, high curbs. Hit those, and you will cause the car to have a bit of a pogo effect. So with the fast sweeping corners, fireware will be an issue today for the Nissans, and be prepared to see drivers have issues on exit of the bus stop due to hot tires after hard braking into that final corner. For the GTOs, the Audis will have similar tire issues, but with the constant fighting of understeer, corners that require some sacrifices like Lacombe and Pujon will be a battle of patience for the drivers as they wait to get on throttle. When it comes to multi-class, it's no surprise that the drivers won't have too many problems today. It's a track with multi-class racing in its roots, and with the Audis being very predictable with their lines today, mainly due to the fact they can't deviate mid-corner, the biggest risk will be in the middle of the Lacom to No Name section, or Jackie X section, where uh, the GTPs could lose up to two seconds. The biggest talking point of the day, however, classic hit layout. This means the start line will be after the source, so that means the start of the race will be a chaotic rush of Eau Rouge and Radion. Mike, drivers will have to be look to stay alert. Absolutely. Very challenging track and a track that most drivers have plenty of experience on. Why don't we take a look here at the standings, though, that is in the GTP currently. And leading us away here is going to be Alexander Vandesant in P1 at 55 points. Five points below him is Adrius Valentinus with Brandon Lim in third. Eric Neath coming home in fourth for right now in this championship with Dustin Heroder, Heroder behind him, and Michael DeTurk in sixth, and Ator Sintez Gaindo in seventh, uh, Anol Luis eighth, Yuko Leska in ninth, and Fabian Jungbluth in tenth. Oh. Have a quick look at the GTOs. Mickey Friesen still leading them away. And it's still very tight at the front. And Hixie and Salumba almost and neck. Well, they are neck and neck there. Ten points back. And Porter still near the top there. He was second in the championship before last week. Still fourth. 
He's still there for all the Porter fans there. Don't worry. Josh Brain is there as well. We do see Jack Davids pick it just at the back with David Lehman. I do like talking about the rest of the field because we've then got three drivers just a few points away from that top 10. So again, we're not even a quarter into the season and there's still a lot to play for on that table. Absolutely, and these drivers have a lot of work to do towards the end here. We can take a look here at our race details for tonight. This is round four of 12. As we said, it's a long road ahead of them in the championship. 40-minute race here tonight with an open setup. No spare car available. Drive-through penalties at 17 times. And a disqualification at 25, which is very possible. As that stands, though, I think we are going to be heading now into quali. We have a few minutes left, and our current pole sitter is going to be Adrius Valentinus, I think is indeed i think we're just looking at nil's core here at the moment this is the gto's one of the things that we got to look out for these audis just see how much speed they have to slow down here as well one of the things as well if you're not used to the gto's they've got to blip the throttle to get that gear down and into the slot and you can just see how much work they have to run with and how much runoff they get to work with around no name yeah, absolutely, as we see here, hopping on with Valentinus now through the middle sector, the famous kind of piff path through the middle here, and then setting it up once again and getting that maximum rotation through the right hander. A little bit of a fight there on exit now is the long wind up as you accelerate all the way down towards Blanchemont. Down they come into Blanchemont. This is going to be pure flats for the GTP today, and just see Valentinus, a stalwart of the historic racing series and look how he's going to try and find that braking again one thing i talked about is hard braking down here braking too hard and shifting too fast could also cause that car just to have a bit of a slingshot he is pole is he going to extend that time you will wait and see because i've fallen for the trap it's classic today that also means the finish line is after la source Indeed, and so we will be seeing them now set their lap, as that threw me off as well, uh, to the line here. It is going to be a 157.5, just off the pace there of his previous lap, and it looks like he is going to be trying again. Back down now to the Quattros. Yeah, Solomon, but he's got a couple corners left to do. He's currently pole. Four tenths ahead of Noel Lumberg, and of course, with some of the uh, current champions in the GTOs, no longer driving GTOs at the moment, taking a bit of a break. Some of these drivers really trying to forge their own name and legacy around here. So Lumberg will go faster. Friesen did respond, but because of that lap time by Solumba, he will keep the pole position. Just a few more drivers left to go, including Johan van Hixing. Valenbuck here. This is going to be, looks like the qualifying coming down to a close here soon enough. We are going to be seeing these drivers head on over to the session, and we will be gridding soon enough. As we have it here, this is row one. Starting off at the front here, it is going to be Adrius Valentinus leading us off here with a 57-3. Behind that by four tenths, it is Brandon Ro uh, Rosberg in second. Timothy Reed coming home in third with J Jack Wells in fourth. Being on row three is Timothy Va uh, Vaughn with Dustin Heroder in sixth. Seventh position belonging to Ivan uh, Ayusik, Ayuso and uh, eighth belonging to Laut Olsen. Brandon Lim in ninth and Javier Del Olmo coming home in tenth. And Danny, uh, Dylan Freckleson, Freckleson in P11 with Ator Sintes uh, Galindo in 12th with Fabian Jungbluth in P13. Seamus Power, 14th, quickest here tonight with Martin. Uh, company behind him in 15th, Jake Wilman in 16th, Alonso Fernandez in 17th, Ade Allen in 18th, 19th belonging to Emerson Gadin. And rounding out your top 20 here is going to be Stefan. Into row 11, it is going to be 21st for Alberto Domici, Scott Lear in 22nd, and last but not least for the GTP class is going to be Carlos Francesca. Apologies on the mispronunciation. 
Uh, with the GTOs, we saw Salumba will be pole position with Mickey Friesen in second. Nils Kaur will be third position with Johan Van Hixey in fourth. Then it's Noel Lundberg fifth. Doug Cloud will be sixth. Dave Gutierrez will be seventh with Roman Bello in eighth. Cam Porter will take that ninth position with Josh Brain rounding out the top ten. As we head down to the last seven drivers, Yannick Chavin will be eleventh. Daniel Kell will take twelfth. Kevin Blinkley will be thirteenth. Michael Carpenter. We'll take that 14th position. David Van Slamburg will be 15th. The last of the time qualifiers as Felipe Moria will be 16th and Pablo Rangel will be 17th. That is 17 GTOs, 23 GTPs for a very nicely even split. Absolutely. See the temperature out there. Mostly cloudy, 68 degrees ambient and 20 degrees track, or 85 degrees track, excuse me. Uh, Celsius there as well, 20 Celsius, 29 for the track. A very low wind speed here tonight and a low percentage of humidity. Probably not going to be seeing any rain here tonight, which would be, uh, well, a little spicy. be quite surprised if there was some rain. It's not been turned on yet for the series, but we do wait for those days. This is going to be interesting, though, because one of the things they're not used to, it's classic pits, so it's not endurance pits. So while they have to wait until they get past resource to go, the pace car will also come into a pit lane on the corner after the source on that classic start finish line. If it was endurance pit, it would come in now. But you see, there's the cones. No bueno. They don't want to go there. It's going to be 40 minutes of high octane action. Expect the multi-class action to happen after about five, six laps. It's going to be very interesting, Mike absolutely i cannot wait myself this is so exciting you can see that jam pack loaded grid a staggered start as well we'll be seeing the gtps eventually but you can see that safety car leading us here now through the first corner normally uh, where the formula one cars would start here but not today we are going to be coming down the hill as the pace car gets ready to peel on in here and we'll be handing it over to the leader pace car is in and we begin the descent down over his radion the sent 103 meters as we go green, 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 and it's going to be a stellar start for pretty much everybody fanning out in the top three, but you have to into Eau Rouge Radion. They go up the hill. Now you can see pretty much nip and tuck throughout the entire field. Pretty much nip and tuck. The GTOs come through. Nils Core gets a great jump around the outside of the source on the green flag to get past Mickey Friesen. He'll take that early lead. They've got to be careful not to get any off tracks up here. Chavin also moves into the top 10, but it's pretty much single file outside there. But we do have a moment at the front of the GTP field as I believe Laos Olsen has gone off. Oh, that is huge. That could be very affecting here in the championship. Side by side, though, as they go at the end of the Kemmel straight, no love lost between Niels Kor and Noel Lundberg. Tied by side all the way through. You can see the fire-breathing dragons as that turbocharger goes through the gears. The Lumber's really trying to hold on to that lead, and you can see just behind as well, Johan Van Hixie, as we just go on board with Niels Kor. He gets that overtake there. Not been a good start for Mickey Friesen here. Maybe just unable to get those tires warmed up at the moment. Going to have to try and work this the hard way, but it is going to be a very tough work. But he's there. He's got a box of neutrals. I think he needs to find those gears right now. <laughs> Absolutely. So far, he's working him quite well, though, it is to be said. We're running in fourth at the current moment, but still plenty of ground to be gained. And you can see as he is just biding his time, waiting, everybody else behind there getting a little bit scrappy. We're looking here at the four car, though, of Noel. And he is looking for it in sector three. Now, that is not the most advantageous spot to go for an overtake. But here at Spa, you really can make any corner work if you try hard enough. Any corner is an overtaking corner as long as you've got the respect. It takes two to tango at the end of the day. But I think he's just going to wait his moment. A lot of slipstreaming capabilities here. Even with the washing machines that these cars are. They punch a hole through the air. And it could be very interesting to see what happens. Meanwhile though, the top two have left everybody in the GTP. Dustin Hiroda is in a little battle though for the rest of the field. Yeah, Dustin Roder making up a position there up onto the podium slots now. You can see he is detaching himself from the company behind in that detached motorsports. The slipstream, though, is strong, especially in these GTPs. Uh, so look for the braking marker. Nowhere close there to be making a send for the likes of Van. You gotta be careful. Got to be careful when they come through that corner because you want to have those battles. 
but you also know that if you start to go side by side at this stage of the race, you start to lose more time to the leaders. And Valentagius is a fast driver, and we know Roseboro is also pretty quick, and he's holding his own at the moment. But the moment you start going side by side through Lacombe, that just opens up a lot of issues. It's going to really punch everybody up. So they want to pick their moves early, and that's why it's a very slipstream-dependent corner there to get the overtaking done before the corner at Lacombe. Absolutely, and Brandon Rosberg here trying to do what he can, uh, Berg trying to do what he can here to catch or keep up with Valentinus up at the front here. But as it stands, Valentinus, he is pulling out a pace like no other at this moment. Yeah, he's a former 9K driver for a reason, and this race, if he wins it, would put him back in 9K. Very respectable stat that a lot of people love those milestones, and he comes and goes through that position. He does not mind what happens. It's just the nature of the driver. He just needs to pull ahead. He already got out of that slipstream. Roseboro is no longer in the slipstream. A few mistakes could pull him back, but it's going to take a while before they come to the traffic. So I think he's just going to have to hope for the traffic is Brandon. Yeah, bide his time and wait. As you said, it'll be about five laps before we do end up finding some of that traffic. And here, Seamus in P7, under pressure currently. Definitely feeling it as through the first corner they go. Now down Eau Rouge Radion. This is where things get tight. I got to say, I love this track, especially Spa. It's such a historic circuit. Founded all the way back in 1921. Now, don't get me wrong. We do not use the same layout by any stretch of the imagination. We use the layout from 2022. But this track has made history, and it looks like there's more tonight side by side as they go down towards Lacombe. Yeah, Timmy Fivorn getting past Dustin Hiroda. And meanwhile, in the background, Sintez Galindo getting past oh. Javier Del Oma, the champion. We have got one that's gone off, though. And I believe that Freckleton, he's gone off just a little bit too much. He hit those curves that I mentioned. You don't want to be hitting those curves at Lacombe. Side by side, unfortunately, there a little bit too much. And yes, exactly. These low to the ground downforce cars really struggle to take that curbage through the corner. He's going to have to carry on now, still in the top 10, but he's feeling the pressure once again. It's going to be tough to make a move through Pujon just because of the fact that these cars have so much downforce. It's tough to take these sort of cars side by side through Pujon. So he's just going to wait Is Emerson Golden, who's in the green car, just there trying to hold on. But that mistake from Freckleton, it just opens the field up a bit. Is everyone now, they're repositioning where they are, but it also concertinas some of that field. This field, however hasn't split apart at all yet no but it looks like Niels core has lost his p1 at some point here as Silimbus is now or uh yeah Silimba has now taken the lead of this race for the gto championship side of things the audi quattros so like i said the fire breathing dragons i love the animations for these cars isn't it just good just good to see the pops and bangs of these old five-cylinder engines. I love seeing these cars go around. Love the sounds they give. It is a handful. If anyone's never tried these cars, try them. They're not easy to drive, but these are some fantastic drivers going by. And just look at that snake effect. I love it. I love the fire, but I also love seeing that snake effect at the racing line. Absolutely. It's like one of those little plastic snakes that you had as a toy. You know what I mean? They're the, as a, those little physics snakes. You turn the head and the whole back goes, but there was some contact there and it looked like quite heavy. And it seemed like a position change happened. I'm not sure. Was that Lin uh, Lundberg? Yeah, Lumbo trying to get past Friesen. I think Mickey Friesen, yeah, Mickey Friesen misshifted. I believe that's what happened with Miss, uh, uh, Friesen. He had a misshift there, and Lundberg had nowhere to go. Friesen tried to get out of the way as fast as he could. Could not out in time. Don't think there's any serious damage there. I think he managed to get away from it. Yeah, no contact. They're all okay, but Friesen losing another spot. He started P2 in this race. He's now P5 unfortunate backwards is the uh well trend at the moment hopefully he can change that to a forward momentum number 23 car at the moment carolina and the audi car is so wide you can see it goes through the first corner again this is going to be one of your best overtaking opportunities through there but again we said earlier any corner you can really make work on this track minus a few that are a little dicey, but you can still get it done if, uh, if the right circumstances. And here is the onboard. Yeah, I guess remember as well, we've got to remember, always remember, La Source is the last corner today. So usually people would go for those diving opportunities into the bus stop. Now it's a little bit more 
forgiving into make, trying to make a dive into the source with so much runoff there could be something that could play early, later into the race. Lundberg, though, is trying to catch up to the rest of the leaders. Mickey Friesen trying to pull along as well as we see. Behind him, he's got Doug Cloud. He's bringing him along. It's going to be a train of six cars, almost seven cars for this lead battle. And last lap, Nils Kors set the fastest time in the GTOs. So everyone here at the moment just keeping a respectable pace and no one's looking for anything crazy just yet. Yeah, and speaking of fastest laps, you know, just a brief little mention, Brandon Rosberg actually is, or Rosbro is the one that has the fastest lap for the GTPs. So we may see Valentinus come under pressure at some point. You can see though, still quite the gap up at the front. Yeah, in fact, I do realize as well, last lap, Valentinus did take half a second away. We'll look at that later on because they're coming up to the multi-class traffic. I would say in a lap, I was just a lap off there with that prediction. There is Valentinus there. He's uh, 18 seconds ahead of him is the back of the GTO field. And they are a little bit split, so one to pay attention to. I'll tell you what, the one thing we don't talk about here, we said that there is a drive through for incidents. This is a track that a lot of drivers are picking up a lot of incidents for just dipping too many tires over the white line at the moment. Now that's going to be something these drivers have to work on or they'll be receiving a penalty as a result. Nobody wants to be picking that up. Uh, definitely want to be losing the positions on track, not off, or gaining them on and not off, rather. Yeah, just remember as well, it'll be a drive-through penalty for 17 incident points. A disqualification at 75. And if you think an off-track is a 1x, you've got 17 of those in 40 minutes. You don't really want to be using a lot of those. Danger points for these off-tracks, No Name and Stavlov. They are the biggest issues. And Puhon, the three biggest issues will be those three corners. And I, I have seen some drivers just being a little bit too careless going up over Rouge and Radion. If they go too far, they will incur a slowdown penalty that they will have to serve trying to gain those extra little thousands those extra little tenths it can cost you in terms of minutes if you're not careful especially the pit lane here at spa is absolutely brutal you do not want to be taking an unnecessary trip down it for any imaginary for any reason whatsoever yeah especially because like i said it is the classic but being in the classic, it means you've got to take a pit exit. There it is. We do have a spinner, though. It's Timothy Reed, who's had a big one. That is coming out of uh, Blanchemont. Not sure what's happened there for him to lose it. But we do see him getting back on track there. But he has lost a lot of time. Also, the GSRC replay. Would not be surprised if he tried to hold on to it. No side-by-side -side battling here. And did he just get a bit too hot into it? Yeah. He got a bit too hot and he took the safe option and made the spin instead of taking another driver out. A little bit of chivalry there. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than letting off the brakes, which is what would have needed to be happen if he wanted to make the corner, he would have went stoving straight into the back of the car ahead of him. He decides that I will sacrifice myself and lock up. And he is going to be now down in P22 with some ground to make up for the Atlantic number 17 here of Timothy Reed. So... I was saying earlier, Mike, that the GTPs will be coming through multi-class traffic. They've already started. Valentagius has started his way through, as has Roseborough. They are just going through the first set of the GTOs. It's the back of the field. 17 GTOs here today. So there's not a lot. However, with how they're all bunched up, it does cause issues. And when you get to this at the front of the GTO field, where you've got the top four, and with the fifth one just straggling away, it's going to be tough to try and make as many moves as possible. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to become a real knife fight in a phone booth here soon enough. And especially for the GTPs, they're going to have to be very careful. But also, one thing that people often forget is they always say, oh, well, you know, the faster car is responsible. Yes, that is 100% true. But also, the slower car is going to have to let them buy at some point in order to, well, mostly not get taken out or lose positions otherwise. So we are going to be having to see that little bit of a uh, a dance, as you would call it, in the multi-class racing, the multi-class dance. Takes two to tango, doesn't it? And that's what they've got to work on their way here. Top four all here with the GTOs. I'm just seeing Valentasius. He's about to try and go over and ready on. He is going to be here shortly. I'm going to predict where he is compared to the other cars. I think he may hit these guys coming through Puhon. So just keep an eye. In fact, there he is in the distance. You just see him in the distance there on these front four, all fighting on. And he's already got past Cam Porter. He's lost a bit of time to Roseborough, but Roseborough has lost more time over the last lap. 
just goes to show these Audis, yes, these G these uh, Nissan GTPs can go around, Mike. But the Audis, they have to take stick to one line because of this four wheel drive. Yeah, and if you catch the car at the wrong time, you catch one of those Audis through Eau Rouge Radion, you're going to be having a really bad day. It compromises your exit onto the straight. It compromises everything. You can see here, Andreas, he is wasting absolutely no time charging his way through the field, not taking no for an answer. Even through Ravage, he made an overtake stick on the outside. And look at that, commanding amounts of grip. This is just the true difference in multi-class here and what shows the caliber of these two machines. One of the things I've always said is watch Valentasia. If you want to learn how to do multi-class, watch Valentasia. Look at this right now. He knows he can't make that other move on Salumba. He knows that he has to do it. He knows straight away he's got the throttle. He's got the acceleration. All those moves he's just done there through Pujon, Lafania, and there at the start of Stavlon. He understood the commitment what that car can do. He understood what the Audis have to do and what line they will take. He trusted them and he trusted his machinery and he is just so confident. He, he doesn't even look like he's getting held up by the traffic sometime, despite he has lost a second since I started talking. No, absolutely. And as you can see there behind, that is going to be, I think that is Rospero behind. And he is bottlenecked right now with absolutely nowhere to go. And that's going to be Timothy Vaughn not too far away and gaining on him here. If he gets caught up with these back markers through Aruj Radion, this could be really spelling out a poor situation here for the likes of our P2 runner. I've got a terminology and everyone on the stream knows it. They're going to hate me saying this. The bookmark effect. You put a slower class car in between you and the person you're driving. What's happened here? Two cars between Roseboro and Vaughn. Two cars between Vaughn and Heroda. That's a double bookmark. And look at how aggressive some of these cars are going. Roseboro knows he needs to get going. If you get held up at the top, of Eau Rouge and Radion. If you get held up at Radion, you're going to have a bit of an issue. And look at this as well. Nils Kors is going to use that GTP to try and make a move. Couldn't. Trying to use that for his advantage. Could not make it. No, not quite. The number three car there. Biting at the heels. Trying to take the lead of this race. This is often what people forget. You know, you get caught up watching the faster cars go by. This is all a battle for position here between all of these Audis. Now we have another car. I think that's going to be uh, Von Hixie sliding on through here into no name. It's a bold way to make by, especially just one car. Does make it through safely, though. Yeah, Hirona gets by safely. Salumba holds off. I did see Van Hixie just getting a little bit of an issue. And now look at this. Ator Sintet Kalindo. He'll take an off track. I mean, Omo having to get on the brakes in the orange car there. He was having a little bit of a moment. Well, look at this. Fabian Jumbluff coming by. No, Seamus Power, sorry. Fabian Jumbluff is back as well. All these drivers, they're having a battle at the moment. This usually splits the G, the pass of class category up. This also splits up the slower class. Nils have lost a lot of time to Salumba there. Yeah, he most certainly has. Needs to get back onto it. But at the moment, carrying on, we can see our lead at the front. Valenteus, holy smokes. Seven and a half seconds. He has walked away and disappeared with this one at the moment. It's looking like a bit of a one-horse show up front. Anything can happen in racing, though, and it normally does. So don't count anything out. We're not even halfway through yet. Anything can happen, and we're seeing more battles going on as the drivers. Now they, now these GTPs have gone through. The front part of the GTPs have gone through the GTO. Now they can get back to racing again. And you could just see the franticness and the panic sometimes. It, it's not serious panic. These drivers are pretty cool, calm, and collected. But you can just start to see where they put their car when it comes to getting through the uh, slower ch classes. Because they know one mistake, they'll lose time here. That is what Javier was trying to do. He'll go up the hill, up to Radion. Seamus Power behind. Power's got a better run here. Can he make the move? I think Del Omar will try and defend this. Yeah, most certainly, as you see, slams that inside shut, leaving only one line for the likes of power to take. But he has the power, he has the speed, and he is fully by before they reach the braking zone. Nicely done there. And the number 11 is now dispatched back one more position down to 11. Yeah, and that's really important, though, because one thing Del Omo decided to do was he realized the situation. He realized he could not make that move. They could not defend it. He knew if he defended it, they were going to lose time to Atol Sintes Galindo in fifth. Decided against it, and that is very smart play by him, as we do expect from him. But Van Hixie looks like he's caught between a rock and a hard place because I see so many GTPs trying to get by while he's still battling no lumber. 
Yeah, I see a bunch of puffs of tire smoke too, which means these cars are really wheeling it at the moment. They're pushing very hard and trying to stay ahead of each other as the Audi there goes, dips the tire into the grass through No Name just to avoid that contact. It's very challenging at these moments. This is when you have to be on high alert at all times because any little mistake, anything just caught sleeping for a moment could result in not just one, but three, four positions dropped here in this pack. And not just three positions dropped. Could be the case of three, maybe even four and above cars caught in an accident with how clustered they all are at the moment. Just goes to show that they have to be patient around there. It's tight corners. It's not like the last week where they had a wide open port of mouth. It's a bit narrow now. It's high speed, but it's very narrow. It's Johan van Hixey. He is looking to find a bit of free air. He really wants gone of these GTPs. Yeah, and I do not blame him, quite frankly. He just wants to battle his own race and not have to worry about the faster cars around him. Just worry about the people that he knows that he is faster than. But right now, he's not able to unleash that true pace. He's having to dodge, weave, move out of the way, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Uh, it's just a bit of a challenge out there right now. Yeah, it is the four Ds of dodgeball, but I think you could use that in multi-class as we go on board with Mickey Friesen, who's just behind him as well. He's seen these drivers. He wants to get through them as well. He overshoots the source. That's going to cost him a bit of time. Not a corner you want to be going through. You can just see a little bit of frustration on his face. That Well, a little bit motionless, but I think in his head, he's thinking there for a moment, why did I do that? Yeah, unfortunate. Also, just wanted to give him a nice little shout out representing the G29, I think, or it's a G920, one of the two. Uh, but still, gotta love the. This is a true testament to show that it doesn't matter what wheel or what pedals you have, if you can, uh, you can make anything work at, at any stretch. It's just all about the human brain learning and uh, getting good with what you have. Yeah, using the shifter as well, one of the things that a lot of these drivers like to use. Yes, you could use your hand paddles, but this is the car that had a shift. You can see it right there, and that is a proper H pattern as well. So they are some of these drivers, they actually go do the H patterns. They don't use the sequential. They go full ham. This is realism, and this is immersion, and they love it, and it really does help them as well with the driving. Absolutely, and that is, you said earlier, one of the things that can happen is you can miss a shift, right? You go, maybe you're trying to put it in the third, you put it in first, which is the worst case scenario. That could end up in a blown gearbox. But uh, yeah, it's very challenging just making sure you hit it every single time and get those gears perfect. Use the clutch properly. And these cars earlier, as you'd mentioned uh, before the stream, very, very understeery. Lots of uh, potential for these cars to end up into a wall. And so far, it's been, well, quite trivial i would say for these drivers i i've been knocking on wood of everything you've been saying i don't want to see a blown engine we don't want to see a car in the wall anything can happen though with 19 minutes left with just over the halfway stage so anything can still happen as van hixey trying to pull away from freezing but freezing has managed to pull up a little bit here in these three cars now call it a free car battle for the end of the podium Lumberg, Friesen and uh, Van Hixie as well but we've got to keep looking elsewhere because of the battle for the rest of the podiums in GTP because that traffic really helped Timothy Vaughn out he's managed to catch up to the back of Brandon Rosebar yes he has and now going to be trying to put the pressure on and well not really worry about the lead of this race I think at this point they're going to be just battling with each other trying to make do and figure each other out at this point. It's a bit of a chess game. Still with 18 minutes and 55 seconds left. Anything can happen. And the Australian slash New Zealand. Um, the, I guess the oceanic car here. Is going to be trying what he can for the number five. And if he can try and make a move later on the lap, he might be able to. I'm looking to see where they are. Again, a few, uh, another lap or so, and they'll be having more traffic. So could be interesting to see, will that play factor? Because we know Vaughn has been faster, and he's going to be faster at the moment, of course, because of Slipstream. Can he use that traffic to his advantage? Maybe make a pick move. Maybe just catch a mistake out of Brandon there later in the lap. You can see he's not looking to do anything crazy at the moment. He's waiting for his opportunity. Almost a mistake there. It almost over-rotated the car, but managed to keep it nice and good. Got a good exit there as a result. Heading now down the start, finish straight. And through the first corner, down to the Eau Rouge Radion Complex, where again, we'll be on that Nice, over a half a mile straight is that or uh, the Kemmel straight. Just about 0.65 of a mile, one kilometer. 
And it is a all-out drag race for those guys, especially up a hill. That's one thing you don't often see. It's just how steep that hill is here at Spa. Oh, I've seen the photos. I cannot believe it. Can you believe it? they also did rally cross using Oruja and Radion once, once upon a time? Just thinking, going down that hill, they went. They didn't go up it. They went down it, and that's even scary. And I've seen some drivers in test drive take these cars and go around Spa backwards, and just seeing that drop is very scary. But they're not taking a drop today. They're taking a climb, and it's a climb for Van Hixie. He's comfortable in fourth. You don't want to be comfortable. You want to be battling those positions. Friesen trying to catch up as much as he can. It's not working. I do see off tracks, off tracks galore. And Lumberg taking some more. I'm keeping my eyes open in case somebody does get a drive through. Maybe in the last 10 minutes, we may see some of these drivers be a little bit more cautious on their throttle control coming out the corners. I certainly hope so. I'd hate to see positions lost to a drive through penalty. As I said here, this is one of those tracks that if you do end up getting a drive through penalty, the pit lane is just so incredibly long that uh, you're going to be having a pretty bad day. It does look like, actually, I'm not sure which pit lane we're using, but uh, regardless, it is, yeah, it's just, it doesn't matter which pit lane you're using. It's still an absolutely brutal one here at Spa. Yeah, remember, once again, if you, if you didn't under, didn't hear it the first time, folks, it is the classic pits. So that means the start-finish line after the source also means the old pit lane, which means the pit lane exit means you skip over route and ready on it, and you come up at the top of the hill. So it's a very long way to get up there. You can get up to speed, but that pit lane exit up over route and ready on is not exactly a high-speed straight in any measure. No, you'd be wasting maybe minutes if you go through there, and that's not ideal. Down at least one lap, I would say, but these cars, absolutely flying, it is to be said. And in terms of fastest lap, who is currently in the GTPs? Is it still uh, Rosberg, the Brosbro that has that? I believe it so. Is. Doug Cloud, sorry, I was about to say, we just lost Doug Cloud. He's just had a moment out there on track. Oh, he's had a bit of a slide. We've lost Doug Cloud from, I believe, that was in the top 10 of the GTOs, and he's retired the car. I don't know if we'll get it on a replay in a moment. He lost the back in coming through Malmody. Not one I'm used to seeing, but through Malmody, lost the rear, and unfortunately lost the car into a wall. Del Omo, Power, and Jungbluff, and they're trying to keep these cars planted. They do have the downforce, but it's still very tight here. This is a battle we've been missing for Pete's sake. Yeah, unfortunate. Nice little three-way bout here. The number 19 in a sandwich that I'm not sure he's too thrilled with. Seamus Power here. Obviously, we saw him earlier. I think he managed it. He's been having this battle with Javier for a good while now. And I think they've traded blows a few times, potentially. Maybe not contact, but at least positions. Yeah, I'm just looking. Seamus Power plus seven on the day. Yumbler plus five. Del Omo plus four. So they've had some really good battles to get through the field. And very shortly, they'll be hitting some GTO traffic. So that could be interesting. Del Omo, the only man to go back to back in a GTO and a GTP championship. This is uh, not the season he was expecting to have defending his crown. However, well, not defending his crown anymore the champion two seasons ago however if there's anyone who understands the nature of the gtos and what they've got to do around here it's a man that has a few championships under his belt yeah experience is one of the most helpful things you can have when you know how to do the work that you're here to do it can most certainly benefit you you see the 11 car there feeling the pressure as the number 19 pushes him through the corner practically coming now back on to the start finish straight here or what would normally be the start finish straight also, oh, is that Timothy Vaughan? Noticed. Sorry, is that Timothy Vaughan? He Timothy actually took Vaughan, the words out of my mouth. He's got massive damage. Sorry. Timothy Vaughan just oh. flipped over. Wait. I don't know if he's oh. play on that. Yeah, this is absolutely insane. Timothy Vaughan has come out. And just watch this. You have not seen this yet, Mike. I've never seen this before. This is Timothy Vaughan. He's coming through. He's in that battle. Too much speed. We'll lose this to car. I'm not sure who that GTO is. It's the number eight. That's Yannick Chavin. And he had to go and a massive flip there for Vaughn, especially with the arrow there. All that damage, his race is done. I have no idea how that car gained that momentum. I also, what I was about to say with Timothy Vaughn is I think he actually just put in the fastest lap before that. <laughs> I think he was holding it just briefly. Um, and well, it looks like that is going to be some damage that has to be repaired because 
man had enough mid-air time to be served wine on that flight. Oh, I was actually wondering if that was a 720 or a 540, but all jokes aside, that is not what you want to see, and it was a mistake by himself, and you can't blame the GTO going into him. No time to really make that move, and remember, some drivers, they don't have ultra-wide or triple monitors. They may only be having a single screen, but there's a pillar in the way there as well. You can get a little bit uh, held up there, so it's not all on that GTO. It's just one of those racing things. This battle, though, has not let up. But apart from power, losing a position. Yeah, and also the 11 now kind of walking a little bit further ahead at the moment, but they are going to be firmly within each other's grasp, I would imagine. This is going to be a battle that is going to go to the checkered flag, I presume, as the backmarkers get involved. As it stands, it's been nothing but action. Wells there under massive threat, almost getting pushed through the bus stop there, but a good enough exit should hold him off here for the first corner. Yeah, here they go, lovely overhead camera here as you see the drivers come through for one more time. They're about to start uh, lap 15 of a possible 20 today. And for these drivers, they are a couple laps down. Van Hixie is still trying to play defense here. How long can a man keep defending? Well, it's Lundberg who's got to defend. How long can a man keep defending? Granted, Van Hixie isn't looking for the moves. He's waiting for the opportunity, but how long will it be until Lumberg or Van Hixie even makes the mistake? Yeah, realistically, it's going to be a game of chance here. These drivers are all just pushing each other to the maximum, forcing a mistake for each other. Uh, and while well, trying not to force a mistake for themselves, you can see the thought there. He's looking to the inside of Pua. Now, he doesn't, he knows for a fact that he isn't going to be going for it. In fact, actually, I think he was covering off the, the back or the, the front marker there. Uh, but still, it's all about those mind games, trying to get into your opponent's head and force them to do something different that you would do, which would give you that advantage and give them the disadvantage. But also at the same time, not that some of these drivers would be phased by it, but some, some other drivers will be phased by a driver just putting his nose out before braking, just to make you have that second thought in your head. Oh, is he going for a scent? These are not the cars you can go for dives on because of the nature of the brakes, uh, the nature of the flipping with the shifting of the gears and everything. You don't really want to be sending it. If you send it, what it means is you've gone in a bit too hot. So they've got to be careful for the lap. Meanwhile, oh, I just see, though, I think Lumbo just dipped a tire on the grass there. And that just held up everybody. Van Hixie had to do a little bit of a checkup. For reason, I'd do a little bit of a checkup. That's why they're so close together now just a moment there i think lumbo got away with that yeah he's overdriving this car right now it seems he has really given it 110 percent and he might need to dial that back a few and to prevent just a mistake from happening but it's so easier said than done telling a racing driver to slow down is more or less a futile effort uh, and so we're just probably going to be seeing him push through here uh, and here is the slipstream from behind. This is going to be a really, really good run for the car behind here of uh, Van Hixie. Yeah, but I did see he just had a little bit of a lift, and I think he wants to use that GTP traffic. Not going to happen. Friesen losing out due to traffic as well, as you just see now. Fabian Jumbluff, Del Omo coming through. In fact, Fabian Jumbluff getting past Seamus Power again. I don't know where Javier Del Omo is, though because he was ahead of these guys. Has he had a moment just behind? There he is. I believe he may have just had to serve a slowdown. He did. He cut the top of Radion. Easy mistake to make, but a costly one. He'll be back up there soon enough, I'm sure. More GTPs to come on through here. We'll probably see them slip through the pool on here as they get set up for it. And there we go. You see that inside line being taken. And we're going to see a potential three wide. Okay, that would be... A bit overly optimistic. A bit over optimistic. Javier Del Olmo slicing and dicing. He went outside, inside, held up everybody. He's now in a, trying to do defend P7 from uh, Aseo. But meanwhile, the two up ahead, Jungbluff and Power, they continue to push on. And we're still seeing Van Hixie trying to have this fight. It's just popping off at the front of both classes at the moment it's what you want to see with eight minutes ago this is classic hymns of vintage absolutely could not have it any better thanks everyone for joining us here at global sim racing the imps of vintage round four here at spa next week will be road america 
So do tune in for that. But my goodness, in the meantime, don't go anywhere because this is incredible. Fastest lap now set by Adrias Valentinus, our race leader, who has been not mentioned for a good five or six minutes now. In fact, I'm just trying to think. I don't think anyone's gone into the 58s yet until he has. So that just goes to show. And I'm looking at the track map as well. Basically, every car is on the back half of the track. There's not a, there's not a lot of cars on the long straight up over Rouge and Radion down the Camel Straight. So it just goes to show if you get a very clean track, you've got that opportunity to make the moves. And up they go one more time. And they do have seven minutes left of this. I'm pretty sure they've got seven more exciting moments left. Oh, 100%. I would not go anywhere if I was you, chat. But at the moment, we see here this battle is firmly set between the number 19 car here of of Lessy, or uh, excuse me, apologies for Leslie for the mispronunciations there, but uh, as well as I think that's, or Power, excuse me. Yeah, we just missed power. it. Just say we just missed in the background. There it is. Aseo almost got the overtake on Javier Del Olmo, though, but he had to go around the outside of a com. You know yourself, that's a very tough move to make. Oh, yes. It's an off camber corner that is going to be just peeling you to the left hand side. It's a right hand turn, but your car just wants to go straight, and you have to prevent it from doing exactly that, wrestling a bull through these corners, especially that sector two. That is where having a little bit of extra downforce really can help you. It just goes to show, though, but you got to have that trade-off. Too much downforce, you're going to be losing out on the straights here, and you've got two big straights when you think about these GTPs because all that through Blanchemont is just one straight. It's flat out for these cars, so they have to be careful. And can Ivan make a move this time? Javier does not want to be losing more time to power and Youngbluff up ahead. Nothing's happening there. Ivan has to lift a little bit there. That's a little bit of a telltale sign. If you're too early with the speed there, you're going to make the lift. He's going to try and do this around the outside of the bus stop. I don't think he's got this. I think he's going to yield. Yeah. Oh, big slip, though, for Javier. And that's going to allow the 18 to maybe get his nose placed right, but the 18 slips as well. It's a straight-up war for these two. And, uh, well, currently there's quite a bit of pressure being applied to Javier, but the question is, can he turn pressure into diamonds? You know what? I think a lot of that, they may have had a small touch there. I'm not 100% sure. That could have been it. But we'll go and see this time up the straight. Now there's a big, bigger gap between Del Omo and Ivan uh, Aseo. So now, maybe with this speed, we're not going to see what happened at Blanchemont. And here we go. All the speed in the world. Javier realizes that there's no point defending this. That is smart heads up play. There's no point trying to fight this because he does have the speed, but he could not get it done in time. And look at that delay just holding up Javier. Javier had no chance to make a response there. No, not at all. That is going to be like taking candy from a baby and he is going to walk on. Now, I don't think that is going to be as easy said and done, though. He will have to hold that position throughout and the tables have now turned. He is the one feeling the pressure. Uh, the hunter has become the hunted with four minutes can he do this it's going to be tough to make that stick remember we're talking about a former gtp champion in uh, javier del omo anything can happen out there i can report we just had another driver go off i believe it was uh, ada allen just going off in a battle he is back rolling again and all of a sudden, the traffic comes around. No, not what you want to see. And Fernandez gets a little bit too late there. And it's all come together. And that took out Van Hixie from P4. Oh, the boiling pot has stirred at this point, And there is damage for multiple drivers. Van Hixie trying to make his way through. He got caught up in that as well. And that's going to be big damage. Thankfully, he's on his own for the moment. He has a good, solid gap behind and uh, hopefully he can manage to hold that for the rest of the race, but that will be pretty painful for some of those GTPs as well. That started with Alfonso Fernandez just getting a bit too hot on the throttle through Brussels there. He just thought he could carry a bit more speed. He got too close to the back of Noel Lundberg. He tapped Noel Lundberg, no damage to Lundberg. It spun him around, and unfortunately Van Hixie had nowhere to go. And unfortunately, he just caught up there. And like I said earlier, one mistake could cause three, maybe four cars to have an issue there. Look how many cars got caught up in that pile. Yeah, and it's such an easy thing to do through that sector. Very tight, very unforgiving. The wall is right there as well. So no driver. You can't really drive off the track on either side or else you'd have an even worse contact. Uh, that was just the worst spot for that to really happen on this track. 
And we've had some more hard takers. Remember, we were looking at that battle between Ivan Aseo and Javier Del Olmo. I can confirm Aseo is in the pit. I saw a puff of white smoke. That can only mean one thing, Mike. He money shifted. Oh, can the engine hold up? That's the question. These little five-cylinder engines, as you said, which just is so cool, by the way. You're going to love the Audi. The Quattro from back in the days. Now, obviously, these cars are trying their best to not do the impression of the predecessor and want to keep all four tires between the mayo and the mustard at all times. Well, unfortunately, I can confirm that Aseo has parked the uh, the Nissan GTP for that money shift. He did indeed blow that engine, and that was such a shame after a fantastic little battle with Javier Del Olmo. He can be happy with what he did against a former champion. Just a shame it was unfortunately with two, three minutes when he, when he blew the engine. Three minutes ago, and unfortunately, that's his race done. These two, though, they still got a race going on. They're going to have, I believe, one more lap as Valentagius is already on the white flag. And it's going to be all or nothing now for Seamus Power or Fabian Youngblood. Last lap. The white flag is out here and Seamus Power is running out of time. He's also running. He got a bit of a gap there between them. He's going to need to go very late onto the brakes here and get a great exit simultaneously. He does close up a little bit, but not really. It's going to need uh, quite the effort here uh, if Power is going to be having this position here. You're going to need to try and do what we saw with Ivan a couple laps ago, and he's not close enough to Youngblood to try and make this move done. I don't think he's going to get the chance here. He's going to have to wait for another opportunity. Think about the opportunity places he can make it here, Mike. It could be a case of maybe down to Pujon as a risk. Lafania's an opportunity. Definitely the bus stop. He's only got four real chances to make this move now. Yeah, and it looks like right now he is going to be needing to close up if he wants any chance into the Fangnes, but I think it's going to be the bus stop. I think that's going to be his moment of choice, the opportunity of striking where he's going to send it. He's going to leave it down all the way to the wire to get this done. In the meantime, though, Adrius Valentinus, who we have mentioned very little, uh, he is going to be coming to that checkered flag relatively soon. Very soon indeed. In fact, I believe he's just coming up to the bus stop and look at the moves that these guys are making fabian trying to get away from that was a lap gto gto but valentagius is about to cross the finish line you're not gonna be missing much in fact are we gonna get another lap oh it's on the start wait never mind it's on the other straight we still might get another lap it's gonna be close though Andres valentinus here and heading into the final corner or the first corner uh and it looks like i think we're gonna have another lap are we going to have another lap? I don't know. We are indeed. No, the chicken flag. That is white flag. He never <laughs> saw the white flag. Meanwhile, I can report Fabian Youngblood lost control of the car at Stavlot. Oh, no. Youngblood, he's still ahead, though. No, he's behind. He's behind. He's behind. Power is still oh, ahead. Okay. Yeah, he's still ahead. He's still behind at the moment. I Honestly, I did not think that that would be going for one more lap. This could be a concern for some of these drivers. Do they have the fuel now? It's the, ne it's the next big question. Yeah, that very well could be a problem. You're going to see some of these drivers potentially lifting coast big time on this lap just to keep enough fuel in that tank. They're going to be running on basically dry towards the end here. So, unfortunately, Youngbluff was defending against Seamus Power. Youngblood's got a certain orange car behind him again. It's Javier Del Olmo is right behind once again, and Del Olmo is going to be looking to try and get this move. Same story applies for him. If he can't make the move here, he's got four other opportunities. And with a GTO right ahead, he's going to low. He was looking for a move into Malmody for a moment. He thought it was it. He thought he saw the daylight, but unfortunately it wasn't enough. Still hot on the chase, though. The number nine here is running out of room or running out of track and that is what he wants he's just trying his best to keep ahead here for the final basically two miles left here of spa franca shams he's toying what does young do this time he takes the inside line daniel kell lets them through he knows the situation he's gonna wait be patient he's gonna hold on again look at the late braking and also i just saw a slide there from young he's really taking this car to the limit few more corners to go in the back marker is not going to be helping whatsoever up at the front though this is going to be Andreas Valentinas he has done an absolute master class here tonight to come home with every single lap led in the fastest lap 
And it was a pretty easy day in the office here for Adrias Valentinas, but a lovely effort nonetheless. Back here to the battle between Javier Del uh, Delomo into the final corner. This is going to be the last real overtaking opportunity, and Javier is onto the outside. He'll have the in for the second part, but he is too deep. And that looks like that's going to be done and dusted. The number nine of Brandon Lim, I think, is going to hold on. Yeah, they've still got the source left to go, and I believe they forget about it. Yep, they do. I wonder if Del Omo remembered it was the classic. Maybe not have gone for that move there. Maybe wait is stuck behind. Go into the source could have been interesting. Timothy Reed still in a little battle with himself. He's going to hold off Jack. He's going to try and get Jack Wells up ahead. The car behind is a lap car. It does not matter. Will he play that game right this time? I'm really curious. There's a little bit of damage to Jack Wells. Can he make the move into the source? I think he's too far back. Yeah, it's going to be a big stretch and a big lunge. No heroics into the first corner. And it looks like Timothy Reed is going to have to settle. He sends it to the outside. He is going to get quite the exit. In fact, he's going to get maybe undercut there a little bit. But still, that is going to be P12 nonetheless for him. Oh, my goodness. Okay. It's going to be P12. He's good. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he's good. Don't worry. That was a lap car behind as well. The top four in the GTOs all stay together and got to see one more lap. Columbus so looks like he's going to be driving ahead with this. However, Mickey Friesen is trying to catch up to the back of Lumberg. Don't think it's going to happen. I think it will stay Salumba calls Lumberg and Friesen in the top four. Yeah, one and a half seconds is the gap currently. A bit of a stretch. You can see he wants it. He'll be sticking with him throughout the entirety all the way to the very end. But I think he knows that barring any error, it is going to be the likes of Nils Kor or Lumberg and Lumberg ahead of him. But here is our race leader, Adrius Silimbus, who has led, once again, I think every lap, both of our race leaders, dominant in this session, coming now through the first and final corner. It's weird for me to say that, but that will be the win. It has been weird. Every time we see La Source, it is the first corner, but today it's been the last corner. Hasn't caught many drivers out. Usually a first corner does make a lot of people have those moments, but no. Great driving from all these. And Friesen and Van Hixie only drivers in the top 10 to lose positions overall in the race. Absolutely. And as it stands, that is going to be your results. Adria Silimbus takes the win here tonight for the GTOs. We got Nils Kor and also we'll be resuming with that in a moment.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, after 40 tough minutes of Inza Vintage here at Spa. And we have some winners. So let's get those provisional results down on the on the field. I was going to say on the field, but on the scoreboard is Valentasius, as we just get ready to show them, will be leading in the GTPs. Roseborough getting P2 with Ator Synthet Glendo making nine positions up into third place there. Dustin Hiroda will take fourth and Seamus Power fifth with Fabian Youngblood sixth. David Oma will be seventh and Emerson Golden making up 11 spots into eighth. Brendan Lim ninth and Martin Kratrick will be tenth. We get down to the rest of the order. Jack Wells will be 11th. Timothy Reed will be 12th. And Carlos Fonseca, 13th. Ada Allen, 14th. Alfonso Fernandez will be 15th. Scott Lear, 16th. Jake William will be 17th. Stefani Leslie will be 18th. Dylan Freckleton, 19th. Laos Olsen, 20th. These are all lap down drivers who took damage earlier on. And then we saw Ivan Aseo. He had an engine blow, three laps down. Timothy Vaughan from third place, flipping out of the race at the bus stop. And Alberto Di Michelli also retiring earlier on for the GTOs. Andrea Salumba led from flag to flag. It was a bit of a close battle at the start with Nils Kaur, who came home into P2. Noel Lundberg will take third, and then Mickey Friesen will be fourth, with Johan van Hixie just getting fifth, with David Gutierrez sixth. Cam Porter seventh, and Josh Brain will be eighth, with Kevin Blinkley ninth. Baba Rangel will be 10th. All these drivers are lapped down because they saw the flag before these drive at the front four. Roman Bella will be 11th. Daniel Kell will be 12th. David Van Slambrook will be 13th. Michael Carpenter will be 14th. Felipe Muria will be 15th. And then we've got the retirees of Doug Cloud and Yannick Chavin. I'm not sure why they're saying plus nine and plus eight, but they both were retirees today. But as we get ready to start our interviews, there's only one place to start it. It's the winner of the GTOs, Andreas Salumba, led from fly to fly. And, and it did seem, Andreas, but started the race with a little bit uh, sketchy there. It looked like you had a very tight battle with Nils. Um, yeah, basically starting the race, uh, heart was pounding and stuff. Hands are shaking. The usual, you, you get that going barreling down the camel straight, then having... A uh, singular car just sort of uh, take up more and more of the virtual mirror space. So yeah, uh, saw saw Nils making the move. I kind of decided that sure I'm going to like give him enough room to 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 maneuver, but I'm not just going to give it up. And uh, yeah, so basically managed to keep that one. And uh, yeah, up right up until traffic started, that was basically all that I was doing. I was just trying to keep the keep uh, the basically the draft train at bay and uh, hopefully come out on top of it, of it all once the traffic showed up. Yeah, it looked like you won the traffic lottery because while everyone still stayed together in their little bunches, you were able to use that to pull ahead. What's the secret? I know sometimes you can't help what the GTPs do, but what's the secret? Because there had to be a little bit of strategy there to try and establish a gap with the traffic. Uh, really, the I'm not really sure. I suppose if I had to vocalize it, it would be just to really, really keep your eyes on the relative, see and keep an eye on what's going on in the mirror behind you. And if you see that there's an Nissan coming up and there's a turn coming up up ahead and there's an Nissan behind you, uh, normally what I try to do is just sort of uh, let the, give them a, a little bit extra room just so I could uh, so let them pass by and then sort of set up a better exit for myself then use draft or some of the draft that they have left over just to sort of keep keep myself ahead of the others oh we've got this victory and of course a victory keeps the momentum going the ball keeps rolling it's the big one next week it's road america it's the road america 500 i've got to ask because i know some people like to run in teams some people like to run solo what are your plans for next weekend um yeah so for road america me and uh, a friend of mine arturo skundelis who wasn't able to join in today we're basically planning to team up and uh, do two back-to-back -back splits if uh, if everything goes to plan <laughs> that's what we plan to do well knock on wood on that one before we let you go for the evening you are the winner of the gtos it's only fair to say the floor is yours for any shout outs you'd like to give 
Uh, yeah, so shout out again to Slow and Confused, our little team that we've got. Uh, also shout out to the entire IMSA Vintage uh, community, uh, of course. Uh, fantastic people in there. Uh, always a pleasure to race. And uh, special thanks to GSRC. Without you, I wouldn't be able to watch back replays after the races on Saturday evenings. <laughs> It's a great way. It's a great way to spend your Saturday evening watching about the broadcast. Slow but not confused today, and I don't think slow. Andreas Salumba, winner of the GTOs. Thank you very much, Andreas. We look forward to seeing him next week. And now, next up on the interviews, we've got the man who made nine positions up through the race. P3 in the GTPs. It's Ator Sintes Galindo, and Ator, the first question. How did you make those positions up? It looked like the field were dropping like flies to help you. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been quite a race in terms of uh, attrition, I would say. I think the first lap uh, were like two. I think it was Laos, then Timothy, then and then Brendan. I think he got uh, uh, rear brakes. I mean, so much, so much that happened in just one lap. Uh, I'm going from P12 to P6 and then a couple more. Oof, uh, it's been quite a race. I'm exhausted uh, to try to fight off uh, Dustin. Uh, I'm very happy with this result, if I'm honest. It's the uh, best of the rest. There were like two aliens and then the rest of us. And yeah, pretty, pretty happy with the result. Chunk of points, podium finish. Yeah, good day in the office for me. Good day in the office. Now, one of the things that we don't, we haven't talked about, we talked about a lot, we kept getting confused. Classic pits, which means the source is the last corner how was that start i know you said the start was very chaotic how is that start knowing that you're starting after the source because that's got to be a little bit of um a, a turn you know confusion when trying to start that race yeah i mean uh we're very used to the gp pits and starting on after the the bus stop yes it's a uh, you have to look mental, a uh, mental strength to say. Uh, remember, it or is not in the GP pits. Well, you can guess with a uh, with a uh, with a prompt that says get ready. But still, it's a uh, quite. Uh, it's quite challenging, uh, especially the, it's narrower than, than we think, and we're gonna go side by side, and and also it's uh, on all rouge, so yeah, it's not the best place to overtake. But yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's a spa. Uh, it's uh, one of those tracks that you say you would love it. Uh, uh, it's so popular, then you know uh, for a reason. So yeah. Um, Nothing more to say about it. It's a it's a spa. It's been a classic pit. It's a very interesting uh, uh, um, pit lane, and also we did twenty one laps today thanks to others because of this main space. So yeah, uh, interesting race today with this. Yeah, I, I I will confess, I honestly thought it was going to be finishing on lap twenty. There was a couple seconds left. He didn't see the white flag. Just a couple seconds there. Just a bit bit more longer there could have done. But you're right. Spa is done. A great race at Spa, and I asked her on. Uh, I asked um, Andreas as well. Road America 500 is coming up, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to take a guess. Ator, I think you may be running it in a team this year. This year again. Yes, your guess is correct. <laughs> yeah, uh, am I? Am I gonna actually race with Toh Hisada because uh, last year we were supposed to uh, race together and Ferran, but Ferran is not available this year and and we couldn't make it uh, last year but uh this year i'm planning to bring up togo is an immense uh in a very good driver uh, altogether drives the lot of 49ers you know multi-time champion uh yeah i think i'm expecting a lot of well expecting let's say results but i'm, I'm not gonna say anything uh, because i'm knocking on wood all the time but yeah enjoying it uh, i'm gonna join the next week and uh, hopefully bring uh, some good results i will say when people say knock on wood i've always been told if there's no wood you knock your head so trust me i do have a lot of knocking <laughs> on my head then i'll be knocking on my head for you too that should be fun to see i cannot wait to see that Ator, enjoy the rest of your weekend we look forward to seeing you next weekend that, of course, was Ator Sintes Galindo, P3 in the GTPs. I think we've got time for one more for the evening. And 
why not the man who had the challenge of trying to get the lead in the GTOs, Nils Kaur, who finished second in the race. And Nils, it looked like at the start, you had a really good shot for that victory. But after the first lap, it almost looked like it was just out of your reach there on Andreas. Yeah, good evening, guys. Um, I was definitely, yeah, I, I think I was on the pace for most of the lap. But unfortunately, uh, just through the bus stop and also out of the uh, out of turn one or basically the last corner with this configuration, uh, I was just uh, losing out to Andreas uh, too much to actually go for a pass. Yeah, talk talk us through that mindset though of turn one being the last corner now because that takes out the bus stop as a do or die corner, doesn't it? It now means the bus stop isn't a do or die for an overtake. So it, it kind of changes your mentality, and the start as well also changed that. Yeah, it's definitely a bit bit weird. Like when I first started practicing, I was a bit confused why I didn't. When I set the first lap time, I crossed the start finish, and it didn't give me a lap time. And then I noticed, oh, that's the classic pits. So obviously, the start finish is somewhere else, and somehow the track feels kind of different, although it's exactly the same. It's just got that different feeling. It, it's almost like the clock's moving. It's, it, it, you just get a little bit confused there, and it can affect some of the driving there. But it looked like it was a very nice battle between you, Lundberg, and um, Van Hixie and Friesen at the start of the race. And it looked like the traffic just split everybody up. Did you find a little bit of issue having the traffic slice and dice for you? Uh, yeah, the traffic is Im always uh, in the series. It's quite tricky. Like the first few GDPs, who were also mostly the quickest, uh, they manage it quite well. Also, without yourself losing too much time. But once the uh, slower and probably also less experienced uh, drivers come at you, then you often have some yeah, unfortunate situations where you might lose quite a lot of time. So, of course, it's, uh, it's happened today, as I was saying to Ator, Spa is done. Uh, next week, it is the Road America 500. I know you're a satellite driver. I'm pretty sure Satellite may put out a couple cars. Are you looking at racing in a, in a team for the Satellite, or, or are most of the drivers solo driving next week? Uh, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be that much interest this year. Um, so far, it looks like I'm going to run solo. Maybe that changes, but I, I'm not quite sure yet. I will definitely, uh, last year I was able to uh, win it, so I'm definitely trying to defend that, but it's definitely going to be tough with the uh, new competition we got this year. I was about to shout heresy, saying there's no, there's no, no interest, but it, it's the way it is. It is a busy schedule this season. Before we let you go, Nils, any shout-outs you would like to give? Yeah, definitely a big shout out to Satellite Racing, uh, our sponsors, obviously, Dr. Debra, and yeah, that's all I can say. Well, Niels, congratulations on a P2. We hopefully look forward to seeing you next weekend, but until then, have a good evening. That will do it for the evening. So I want to give a good shout out to the team today. Mike, who had to uh, uh, leave ASAP, Robert and Dougie. And make sure to check out our social media, the website and merchandise store. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you do not miss a moment here on GSRC. As I was saying, the next race will be the Road America 500, which will be next Saturday. I believe I do have on my timings. It's noon Eastern. I may have that time wrong. We will be doing the final time slot for the for the 500. Don't forget as well to check out these other broadcasts coming on the screen. But until next time, race clean, race hard, and we will see you on the track.